Born in an unknown year, Nostara was a Keldor male who was trained in the ways of the Jedi well before the Great Galactic War. With his training as a consular, he was urged to take up a journal by his master, Shaw Bestros. Four years after the beginning of his journal, in the year 3681 BBY, he was given the rank of Jedi Knight by the Jedi Council. It was also on this same day that the Sith had invaded the public space. Dural would soon be dispatched with hundreds of other able-bodied Jedi to defend the Republic in his time of need. Having earned a reputation as a great warrior despite his chosen path, it would not be until 3653 BBY when the war ended that Dural would finally be allowed to return to the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Dural would then go on to become a Jedi Master and Keeper of the Archives. With his new position, he had been tasked with creating a new timeline of the event as he was the foremost professional on the Sith. In the year 3640 BBY, with the death of the Emperor and Darth Magus, new threats for the Republic began to arise. One such threat was the Ascendant Spear, a flagship superweapon employed by the Sith Empire and manned by his former apprentice, now Sith Lord. He would join the CIS and the Republic military in an operation to take down the new weapon, known as Operation Endgame. For the whole of his missions, he would be paired with the CIS agent Theron Shan, and they would be successful in their mission. Nos Dural's final fate is unknown. Born on Dorne, and allegedly stated to be born before 404 BBY, I failed to take this into account as he has been stated as a contemporary of Kwai Yuan Jin which would mean he was born around 90 BBY. Like Nost, he was trained in the ways of the Jedi in the Temple of Coruscant by the Wookiee Jedi Master, Tai Voka. Following the death of his master during the Stark Hyperspace War, he rallied the Jedi and came out victorious in the conflict, with the outcome of him becoming a hero of the Republic. He would go on to be elected to the Jedi Council with the rank of Master. With the outbreak of the Clone Wars, Hoon would be shoehorned into military service like many of his fellow Jedi. He was involved in many campaigns and even faced off against some of the most notable Jedi killers of the era. He would meet his end above the case of Nemodia, becoming a victim of Order 66, having been shot down by his own troops. Hey, how's it going guys? AI here with yet another versus video. I'm also in the process of getting out some new material, but I hope for the time being that you'll be content with what I'm giving you now. Two of some of the most prominent killed old Jedi Masters in galactic history. I bring you Master Nostaral, the Law Master, vs. Master Punkun, the Council Master. Nostaral was a Kildor master of unconfirmed age. However, I can craft together what data I have and say that he was around 62 years of age. This would make him old but not unable. The Kildor are from a world with a helium rich atmosphere, which meant that it was required for them to wear a custom anti ox breath mask on oxygen rich planets. This would present a significant weakness if his mask was targeted as the tactic has been employed on one such occasion. The Kildor were also a tall species ranging from 1.4 to 2 meters, meaning Dural was in his height range. They also possessed clawed hands, giving them an advantage in unarmed combat. Due to their extrasensory organs, his species were also awarded with heightened reflexes. Kyoldo were also noted for their strength, although they have been known to lack in durability due to their weaker constitution. Kokum was also a Keldo master of 70 years of age. This would put him just at venerability according to his species. However, during the Clone Wars, he was still an incredibly able master with gloves, strength, and speed. Like Durol, not much can be said about his physiology as they are of the same species. When we come down to it, 
neither displayed anything above average to any typical Keldor male adults in terms of their pure physical ability. Although Nostarala is several years younger than Kuhn, Master Plo has still demonstrated himself as a more than capable combatant. Neither shall get the edge for physicality. With several accolades to his prowess as a warrior, Nostra, despite being a consular, was a highly skilled and diverse lightsaber duelist. It is not confirmed how many forms are attributed to him, but I believe him to be master of all the forms. This would make sense as it has been noted as using a multitude of different forms, not to mention being an academic and a Jedi lore and lore master of the Jedi archives. Unlike Syndralic, Dural did however boast considerable skill on the battlefield, being a veteran of the Great Galactic War initiated by the resurgent Sith Empire. Having come into conflict with hundreds of Imperial troops and have eaten dozens of Sith Lords. In his appearance in novel Star Wars Annihilation, his first fight was against Darth Carrad and her apprentices. The sizzle and hum of clashing blades echoed off the walls of the cavernous chamber as Carrad's apprentices engaged Nostaral. Their attacks were basic variations of the Makashi style a precise and economical lightsaber form designed for maximum results with minimal movement by stressing jabs and thrusts. Their skills were raw. Like Carrot, much of their training had focused on developing the unique abilities required to help their master command the Ascendant Spear. They were still able to call on the fury of the dark side to move with astonishing strength and speed, but they hadn't mastered the subtle art of allowing the Force to guide their blades. They were wielding the weapon instead of allowing it to become an extension of themselves. Nevertheless, they were relentless in their attacks, and there were two of them. Nostoral was forced onto the defensive to ward off their attacks, occasionally slipping in quick maneuvers drawn from the more aggressive Ataru form to keep them off balance. Darth Carrot merely observed the battle at first, keeping a safe distance from the deadly blade of her former master, while his focus and energies were drained by her apprentices. Realizing he would eventually wear down if he allowed the battle to become a duel of attrition, the Keldor countered with Jem So, the fifth of the seven recognized lightsaber forms. Concentrating his counterattacks exclusively on the physically smaller female Sith, he unleashed a series of savage blows, driving her into a stumbling retreat. For an instant, he was left completely exposed to her human companion but the unexpected ferocity of Nostaral's sudden switch in tactics caught him unprepared. He hesitated a fraction of a second before thrusting forward, giving the Jedi enough time to leap aside, even as his Sith opponent tripped over her own backpedaling feet and fell to the floor. Nostaral lunged forward to deliver a coup de grace, but his momentum was suddenly reversed, and he found himself sailing backwards as Darth Carrot hit him with a powerful force push. Although he ultimately lost the bout, he was still a formidable opponent and was close to killing one of the apprentices. I will admit that he mentioned Kara's abilities to have atrophied due to her over-specialization with her control of the Ascendant Spear and that a vast majority of Sith in the time period were considered fodder, including her apprentices. We must keep in mind that Master Jura had just entered the fight after using the Force to augment his speed and search all over the station for Kara. Not to mention that the location that they were fighting at was a dark side nexus, meaning they had all been amped while Dura wasn't fresh at the start, stacking the odds against him. Nostra was a very analytical duelist who preferred to study his opponent's weaknesses and employ the most suitable form for the job. The most times when he was engaging opponents, he would use Form 6, Naman. Form 6 was a combination of the five previous forms put together that were based around adapting one's fighting to the needs of the moment, allowing practitioners to be flexible in combat. Because of its relaxed focus on lightsaber combat, integrating force powers was also a key aspect of Naman training. It also allowed for a diverse skill set in various areas through the use of other weapons as well as hand-to-hand -hand fighting and integration in combat. After learning as much about his opponent's weaknesses, he would then switch to the most fit fighting style. For example, when he noticed one of Kara's apprentices' weak defenses and weak physicality, he immediately switched to Gem So to dominate the duel. 
he would have also finished her off if it were not for Carrot's intervention. Overall, Mitsura was a capable and masterful lightsaber duelist and has truly earned his reputation as such. Kun lived in an era of the greatest lightsaber duelists in the galaxy. He himself considered as one of its premier lightsaber duelists. Even stated by the Sith apprentice Darth Maul to have wanted to face Kun in a duel in order to truly test his abilities. Over the course of the war, Kun would go on to face such dark siders like the Sarge Ventress, the renowned Jedi Killer, and Savage Opress, the Sith Acolyte. Plo Kun was a noted master of Form 5, mastering both variants, Xian and Jem So. Form 5 was built up from Form 3 Sarisu, as some Jedi felt that the form was too passive. The Xian variant focused on solid defense and was intended for blaster redirection. However, demonstrated by such force wielders like Skywalker and Vindican to be a decent dueling style. The Gemso variant, on the other hand, is a strength oriented style geared towards light table to light table combat, with the main tactic of a good defense being followed by a devastating parry. Back to Plo Koon's tactical mindset, he made for a calculating and devastating warrior. His offensive was very strong and fast, using direct blade strikes and even employing force attacks when necessary. One of his most impressive showings of lightsaber combat was his survival confrontations with Ventress. The first engagement where Plo Koon held off her unorthodox ambush, and even more impressively during the second engagement was able to disarm massage while having a broken arm and even managed to hold her off until Master Fisto was able to arrive with help. The other engagement we've seen him in is with an opposing force field of Savage Press. Not only was Kun able to match the vehement strength blow for blow, but he was even able to injure the brute and pressure him into using a desperate move that nearly cost Kun his life. Although Kun would have been killed if not for Maul's intervention, it's still very impressive that he was able to handle his competition with Savage so well. Because if we look at the challenge he has been able to present to the famed Jedi duo Anakin Skywalker and Obi Wan Kenobi, Plo Koon was also a skilled unarmed martial artist, being hinted as a Terrace Karte specialist. He has been viewed as effortlessly dispatching criminals with ease. I can only imagine he never demonstrated this against Asajj as he was handicapped, and against the press, as it has been shown, unarmed attacks are ineffectual against the Tari Marauder. Overall, Goku may not have been the reigning GM so master of his era, but he certainly could compete. The well-rounded fighting form and a great set of tactical sensibilities to back him up, he was truly one of the greatest duelists of his time. When comparing these two duelists, we must look at their battles against opposing force builders and analyze their strengths and weaknesses. Nosura's confrontations were never against single opponents and took place in a location that was making his connection to the light side extremely difficult. Not to mention circumstances that would detract from his overall combative effectiveness, i.e. expending his force power running through the ship so he was facing psychological torture for hours. Plo Koon's confrontations were hampered by a broken limb and his own physiology. It is still my belief that both would have come out on top in their respective duels. Well, maybe not Plo vs. Savage. Still, Plo Koon were facing a duelist as mentioned presents a challenge to other Jedi Masters of the era. But if the two were to face each other on neutral ground, Plo Koon's all rounded form does not really give Nostara much of an advantage. And neither does Plo get one as Dora has mastered all the forms and can keep Koon on his toes. I do not feel like giving Plo Koon a triumph due to his prowess in unarmed fighting as he hasn't had any demonstration of the form against other force wielders and it probably wouldn't do much good to another highly trained force wielding master who has also employed such unarmed techniques when fighting. But in long term, we have truly not seen what both would be capable of when on neutral ground. Therefore, I shall award neither an edge in martial prowess. Specializing as a Jedi Counselor, Nostra was a powerful practitioner of the Force. His application with telekinesis was quite advanced, as he used it to levitate opponents as well as blast groups of enemies away with Force waves. He was able to use the Force to pull enemies out of cover or towards himself. Doral even more impressively was able to use a powerful Force wave to blast away Karad's armed apprentices. Another sophisticated use of his power was his ability to choke out targets 
but I believe that this was more in line with the force wound rather than the force choke, as it wasn't as powerful as more destructive applications of technique. Saber Throw was also another ability in Dural's skill set, able to telekinetically hurl his lightsaber at opponents. His attack being so powerful, it made Carrot step back to absorb the impact after deflecting it. Whilst Ra was capable of force augmentation, especially with his application for force speed, he was described as being a blur of motion when racing through the halls of Reaver Station. Dural was even able to defeat one of Carrot's apprentices with six strikes in under a second, even when he was not in his prime physical condition. He was also impressively able to act well before anyone in the room could respond, taking in mind that there is also another trained force wielder in the room. Nostra was also able to use a Jedi mind trick, however strong will target to out of his capability. Another ability Dura held was his force sense, able to perceive an in-depth image of what was going on around him without the use of his eyes. A unique ability that Dura held was also the ability to tell the time through the force. Nostra had a strong connection to the force and demonstrated considerable might with it. Plo Koon descended from a long line of Keldor with a powerful affinity for the Force. His use of telekinesis was extremely powerful, for instance when he destroyed a cavern along with Thorm and Qui-Gon Jinn. Koon goes on to casually collapse the cave from the inside by himself. Telepathy slash empathy was also an advanced ability in Koon's repertoire. He was advanced in a basic mind trick and even went on to take his abilities further. Plo Koon was able to restore Aayla Sakura's mind after she had been drugged causing severe amnesia. Another example would be when he was able to probe the mind of Ayako Stark from a far distance away. Force Sense was also an ability that Kun was skilled in when he was able to sense the CIS forces had yet to reveal their full armory. Another exotic ability he possessed was Alter Environment which allowed him to alter the weather and temperature, not to mention summon fog and even ice by controlling the environment. By far, one of Kun's most unique abilities was Electric Judgment a force ability that was a tear on the force lightning. Unlike the force lightning employed by Darksiders, his application for the ability was more in line with force shock. His ability was non-lethal and had simply rendered an opponent unconscious. Like many Jedi, he was also capable of healing grievous wounds with the force. Force speed and force jump also played big parts with Kun's battles, able to run along a cable and strike ships with his lightsaber striking several droids in a span of time it took Clone to utter three words. We will now go through each force ability on both sides and see how each fare against the other. Saber Throw wouldn't do much to Kuhn as he could easily deflect it and most likely even not get staggered. Both have shown a profound aptitude with force speed, giving neither of them an advantage over the other. Nostaral's force wind ability could not affect another force wielding master just as electric judgment could be easily caught with a lightsaber or even tanked by his own force shield. What really separates the two is their levels of application and telekinesis. Plo Koon has demonstrated a powerful application for the ability, whereas Nostra has a limited application for it. My point is further proven when SIS agent Theron Shan asked if he could rip open a heavy durasteel door with the force. He then replied saying, some of the great masters of the legend could, but not me. That one quote proves his limited faculty, while I believe that such a feat would be right up Plo's alley, Plo Koon gets the urge for force ability. Mr. Ra wore a set of basic green or brown Jedi robes. He wielded a green bladed lightsaber with a standard hilt. Plo Koon wore a set of basic Jedi robes and wielded a blue bladed lightsaber with a standard hilt and a rounded pommel. As both wield similar gear, neither shall get the edge for equipment. This has been an extremely difficult verdict to call, as when both have faced off against opposing force wielders in serious duels, they have always had the odds stacked against them, making it problematic to know the extent of their true potential. However, from what I've gathered, I'll do my best to give the most fair and balanced results. Each have matched their opponents and duels in different ways, whether it be in a passive and analytical sense, or a precise and tactical way. In terms of equipment, they are also equals. 
What really sets them apart is their force abilities. I find it ironic that the Jedi Guardian is the better force wielder, while the Jedi Counselor is, uh, well, I won't say better dealers, but you know what I mean. With Kun's application of telekinesis, he would definitely be able to push the Ral around, as he boasts quite the destructive aptitude. It would not be an easy battle, but Kun would come out on top. While I don't believe the Ral would get ragdolled, I do believe that Kun could push on enough to land the killing blow. Thus, I proclaim the Jedi High Council Master for Kun the victor. I hope you've enjoyed my fourth video in a row. Sorry for taking so long to bring out. But these are both characters that need a deep exploration, especially Doral. Anyways, if you have any requests or any idea or even any thoughts, please feel free to leave in the comment section below. Like and subscribe for more content and have a nice day.